All right, guys, today we're going to be evaluating exponents and graphing exponentials. Uh, this first part is actually going to be part of a mastery quiz you're going to have uh, in just a week or two. Um, so let's start by making sure we know how to graph some simple exponentials already. So let's look at this parent function, y equals 4 to the x, and go ahead and, uh, and say how you should graph it. What are the points that would be on this that we can tell? And hopefully we know that... Um, Anything to the zero is one, so four to the zero power is one, and so it goes through the point zero, one, and four to the one power is four. So when x is one, when x is one, the y will be four. It's multiplying by four each time. And even four to the negative one is one fourth. So when x is negative one, y is one fourth. Uh, we know it will have this exponential shape and, uh, you know, if we go to 4 squared, it's already at 16. So by the time x is 2, this is off of this graph. Um, but we can do better than this. And we're going to learn some more about exponentials today. That's going to let us come back to this graph later today and put some more detail on it. So um, there are some exponentials you should already be able to do. And let's make sure um, we can do them. Let's start with, uh, let's do 3 to different powers. Let's do um, 3 to the second power. What is 3 to the second power? And I hope we knew that 3 squared means 3 times 3, which is 9. This exponent tells you how many times to multiply 3 by itself. What about 7 to the 1 power? Well, anything to the 1 power just means there's just one 7 there, so that's all it is. Anything to the 1 power is itself. What about um, 5 to the 0 power? Hopefully we all know that anything to the zero power is one. That's an important one that sometimes people miss. Um, sometimes people will say five to the zero is zero, but that's not correct. Five to the zero is one. And let's do um, two to the negative third power. What is a negative exponent? Well, a negative exponent tells you to divide instead of to multiply. So it's one divided by two to the third power. That's what this negative means. It means to divide by it instead. And two to the third power means two times two times two. This is one eighth. So hopefully we're feeling pretty good about all of these different exponentials that we should already know. Um, how to evaluate exponents that are whole numbers or even negative numbers, any integer powers we should know. We're gonna do something new now. We're gonna do what is um, 25 to the one half power. And to see what this is equal to, um, I want to show you that this is the same. There's a property of exponents that says that if you do a power to another power, this will be, um, these two powers will multiply together. It'll be b times c. A power to a power multiplies, and it'll be b times c. And so if we took this and we wanted to make this equal to 25, whatever, the, I'm going to call this x for right now. If I took uh, 25 to the one-half power, and I squared it, this would be the same as x squared. I just squared both sides of this equation. And when you square it, um, these two exponents will multiply together. And so I'll just get 25 to the one power, which is 25. And now I can solve for x by doing something different. This is the same as doing the square root on both sides. And so x is the square root of 25, okay? Oh, you guys can see this, I'm sorry. I took the square root on both sides um, to get rid of the x squared to find what x is. x is the square root of 25, which is five. It turns out that fraction powers, because when you, it's um, the opposite of squaring it, right? Because if you square it, it will undo the one half because it will multiply to cancel out the dividing. Fraction powers are roots. So we're going to learn a new property right here, which is that a to the 1 over b is the same as the bth root of a. So fraction powers, if there's a, a number in the denominator, is, the, uh, is a root. So let's up, ahead, up above, we saw that 25 to the 1 half power is 5. That's what it is, because 25 to the 1 half power is the square root of 25. We don't have to put the 2 here, it's automatically a 2. But if we had done something like uh, 27 to the 1 third power, 
27 to the 1 third power, this tells you what root it is. It is the cube root of 27, which means what times what times what? What times itself three times gives you 27, and the answer is three. So just like square roots, so square root says what times what, like what times itself once, twice, a cube root means what times itself three times. So the cube root of 27 is three because three times three times three is 27, or three cubed is 27. Cube roots and cubes are inverses of each other. Um, uh, why don't you try one on your own? What is 16 to the one fourth power? So hopefully you knew what this was equal to. What is this equal to? This is the fourth root of 16. And the fourth root of 16 means what times what times what times what gives you 16. So what is the number that times itself four times gives you 16? The answer is two, because two times two times two times two, two times two is four, two times two is four, and four times four is 16. So we can kind of group them like that. Or you just do two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16. Either way, this is the fourth root. So let's practice this a few times and make sure you're okay with this. Um, let's do eight to the one third power, 49 to the one half power, and let's do 10, uh, let's do 100,000 to the one fifth power. So you guys can try these. Eight to the one third power means the cube root of eight. What number times itself three times gives you eight? Two times two times two is eight. Two times two times two. 49 to the one half power, we write as just the square root of 49. It has an automatic two here when you do a square root. It means what times what gives you 49? And the answer is seven. And lastly, this is the fifth root of 100,000, which means what times itself five times gives you 100,000? And the answer is 10. Hopefully we know that when you multiply a bunch of tens together, um, you just add on the extra zeros. One zero, two zeros, three zeros, four zeros, five zeros. So 10 multiplying times itself five times will have five zeros. Okay, um, let's do a new type of exponential. Um, so hold on, let me uh, go ahead and box this important piece of information. This is worth writing down. This is a, an important property. Our next important property is that if we have a to the c over b, then this is the same as, again, that denominator, just like before, that that was a root. This denominator is going to be a root. So the denominator is a root. And um, the C will just be an exponent like normal. So the numerator will be a numerator like normal. And the denominator will be a root. Sometimes we'll write this as the b root of a to the c power. These are equal to each other for almost all cases. Um, so these are both fine. Either way, it's the b root. The denominator is the root, just like it was up here. And the numerator is just going to be what power it is. So let's look at, so this is important. It's worth writing down. So uh, let's see, we've got uh, some examples. Let's do 4 to the 3 halves power. So this is the denominator is the root. It's the square root. We don't have to put a number here because it's automatically a 2. The square root of 4 cubed. And I like doing the cubed on the outside like it is in this one um, because it's usually smaller numbers. If you do 4 cubed and then do the square root, the numbers get a little bit big. But if you do square root of 4 and then cube it, the numbers don't get too big. So um, the square root of 4 is 2. And 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 4 to the 3 halves power is 8. Why don't you guys try a couple of these? Why don't you try? Um, let's do uh, 8 to the 2 thirds power. And hopefully you saw that this could be rewritten as the cube root, because that's the denominator, the cube root of 8 squared. The cube root of 8 means what times what times what gives you 8, and the answer is 2. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, so that's the cube root of 8. And then this 2 still needs to be squared. 2 times 2 is 4, so 2 squared is 4. Um, guys, I, I do want to point out that uh, the cube root of 8 is not the same as this. Um, this means 3 
times the square root of eight. If there's nothing inside of this, this is the square root. So it's saying the square root of eight times three. This one is saying the cube root of eight. So when you're doing a, an nth root, the number needs to go inside of the little check mark. Um, and if you're multiplying, it goes outside of it. So be a little careful when you're writing it on your own. Um, what about uh, what about nine to the four halves power? Nine to the four halves power. Um, you can rewrite it as the square root, because of, of the two, we don't have to put the two in there, the square root of nine to the fourth power. So square root of nine is three, and three to the fourth power means three times three times three times three. So three times three is nine, times three is 27, 27 times three, that's four threes, is 81. Or another way to write it is three times three times, th sometimes when it's fourth powers, I usually break them up as three times three is nine, three times three is nine, nine times nine is 81. I also wanna show you here that we could have simplified this. Four divided by two is two. Four divided by two is two, and nine squared, nine times nine is 81. That's another way to get the same answer. Um, all right, let's try one more. Let's do, um, let's do a thousand to the uh, seven thirds power. A thousand to the seven thirds power. So hopefully we know this is the cube root of a thousand to the seventh power. The cube root of a thousand means what times what times what gives you a thousand. 10 times 10 times 10 because 10 times 10 times 10 will have three zeros that will give you a thousand. And then we need to do it to the seventh power. And here we're gonna have 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, seven times, it'll have seven zeros. So, 10 million. Um, all right, we also want to be able to go the other way and rewrite this. So let's say we have um, the fifth root of seven cubed. How can re we rewrite this as a single exponent as seven to a power? Well, hopefully we see that this is the denominator and this is the numerator. So seven to the three fifths power is this. Why don't you guys try one on your own? Um, what about uh, six to the four thirds power. Oh, sorry, we wanna go the other way. Let's do the uh, square root of x to the fifth power. Um, how do we rewrite this as a fraction power? Well, it's x to the, um, this doesn't have a number in it, so it's automatically a two, so that's the denominator. And the numerator is five, so x to the five halves power. So hopefully we feel good about that. The last type of exponent we want to be able to evaluate is when there's negative with fractions. So let's say we have 8 to the uh, negative 4 thirds power. Well, a negative exponent, let's remember, means to divide. So when there's a negative exponent, it's 1 divided by, and then it's just going to be 8 to the 4 thirds power. So we treat it like if this was positive. 8 to the 4 thirds power, um, the denominator is the root and it's to the fourth power. So it's one divided by the cube root of eight to the fourth power. The cube root of eight, what times what times what gives you eight? Well, two times two times two gives you eight. So the cube root of eight is two, and that needs to be to the fourth power. So it's one sixteenth. So um, negative exponents tell you to divide. Um, fraction exponents work exactly like they did before. Um, the denominator is the root, and the numerator is what power you take it to. Why don't you guys try one on your own? Let's do, we'll, we'll do two on your own. Let's do nine to the negative three halves power. And we'll do 100 to the um, negative five halves power. Um, so uh, nine to the negative three halves power. The negative part means you divide. The uh, two is a root because it's just the square root, and it's going to be 9 cubed. So the square root of 9 is 3, and 3 cubed is 27. So the negative tells you to do 1 divided by. The um, denominator is what root it is, and the numerator tells you what power to take it to. Okay, how about this one? Well, the negative power tells you to do 1 divided by. This is what root it is. Again, it's a square root because it doesn't have a number there, so it's automatically a square root. Um, or you could put the two there, it wouldn't make you get it wrong. 
and then it will be to the fifth power. So you can put the two there or not, but usually we don't because square roots are so much more common than every other root that we usually uh, don't write it if it's a square root. So it's one divided by, what is the square root of 100? Well, that's 10 to the fifth power. So one divided by, we have five zeros here, one divided by 100,000. Okay, um, I'm gonna let you do some mixed practice here. And then let's go back to our earlier problem. Earlier, we had four to the x. And before we were only able to get uh, a few points on this graph. But now we can do more. What powers of four can we do? Well, we can do any roots. Any roots we're able to do, we can do a four. We can do the square root of four. And that is four to the one half power. So when x is one half, so when x is one half, that's the square root of four, the y value will be two. Because when x is one half, four to the one half power is square root of four, and the square root of four is two. So when x is one half, the y value will be two. We can get that point exactly. We can even do, because we can do the square root of four, we can also do the square root of four cubed. Um, so we can do the square root of four cubed, and that is four to what power? That's four to the three halves power. So four to the three halves power means square root of four cubed, and square root of four is two. Two cubed is eight. So uh, when x is three halves, so when the x is three halves, uh, by the way, three divided by two is 1.5, right? So when x is one and a half, the y value will be eight. And we can use this to get an even better graph than we had before. And my graph was slightly off. Uh, we can actually do negative powers too, because we can do the square root of four. We can also do one divided by the square root of four. This is four to what power? What is one divided by the square root of four? What power is that? This is four to the negative power, because it's one divided by one half power because it's the square root. The square root goes in the denominator. So four to the negative one half power is um, one over square root of four, which is one half. So when x is negative one half, the y value comes out to be one half. So when x is negative one half, the y value is one half. And we can see these extra points on our graph, which is really quite nice. Um, Okay, we have a few more minutes here, and I also want to show you one other cool thing about properties of exponents. Um, go ahead and graph 2 to the x on your own here. Um, what is 2 to the x? Do it on your own paper. And 2 to the 0 is 1, 2 to the 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4, and 2 cubed is 8. 2 to the negative 1 power is 1 half, 2 to the negative 2 power is 1 fourth, and so we get this nice graph here. Now, I also want to graph y equals 4 times 2 to the x. 4 times 2 to the x. Uh, we'll graph on the same graph. 4 times 2 to the x. Go ahead and graph it on your own. Now we know that this is the y-intercept. It's the starting value. So the starting value is 4. And it's going to get multiplied by 2 every time. So 4 times 2. So when x is 1, it gets multiplied by 2 to get 8. Then after that, it'll be 16. It'll be off the graph. Going backwards, we can divide by 2. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 divided by 2 is 1 half. A half divided by 2 is 1 fourth. And so we get this graph here. Now, you might notice it is vertically stretched by a factor of 4. But we can do something cool. You might also notice that there's another translation that's happening here, besides it being stretched by a factor of four. And we wanna see why that's true. Well, there's a cool trick we can do, which is to rewrite this as a power of two. What is four? Four is two to what power? Well, four is two squared. And um, there's another property of exponents we can do here, which is that when you multiply, you add the exponents. So this is two to the x plus two power. And we can see that this is a different transformation. This is a transformation to the left by two, because instead of two to the x, it's two to the x plus two, that's left by two, because it's inside of the function. And we can see that all of these points are also shifted two to the left 
um, from where they were before. So I think that's pretty neat that um, both a shift and a uh, stretch are the same thing. Um, let's do one more transformation. Let's make sure we feel comfortable with our transformations of, um, let's make sure we can do transformations of exponents. I think we have time for one more. Let's do um, y equals, let's graph e to the negative x power. Let's graph y equals e to the x, and then we'll graph y equals e to the negative x power. Um, y equals e to the x. This is the most important exponential function, even though you've never seen it before. We just learned about e, and I hope you remember about how big e is. How big is e about? And you need to know it's about 2.7. You don't really need to know past that. It's an irrational number. Um, you know, it's really 2.71828182845904500. Right? Well, it keeps going. Right? Dot dot dot. Um, but you need to know it's about 2.7, and so let's graph e to the x. Well, let's make a table. When x is 0, what is e to the 0 power? Anything to the 0 power is 1. So e to the 0 goes through 0, 1, just like every other parent function. What about e to the 1 power? e to the 1 power is e, which is about 2.7. So when x is 1, y is about 2.7. And we can put that right here between 2 and 3. Now, e squared, you don't need to know this. And so it's completely fine to just say like, hey, I know uh, negative 1 is going to be 1 over e. That's somewhere between that's somewhere between 1 half and 1 third because e is between 2 and 3. So 1 over e is between 1 half and one third, it's somewhere around right here. This is all you need to be able to do to graph it on your own. I don't expect you to get more points. Now we could get more points. Uh, we could say e squared, um, e squared is 7.3. So when x is two, y will be 7.38, um, you know, which is about 2.7 times 2.7, right? It's about 7.3. Um, but you don't need to be able to calculate that on your own. You only need to be able to do these points right here. So if you know um, 0, 1, and 1 is 2.7, that's good enough. Now, on the same graph, let's graph e to the, uh, let's graph negative e to the x. What is negative e to the x? Well, this is what transformation? This is a reflection across the y, the x-axis, sorry, the x-axis. So um, instead of being at 0, 1, it'll be at 0, negative 1. Instead of being at 1 e, it'll be at 1 negative e, so negative 2.7. Instead of having an asymptote that's just above the x-axis, it'll be just below the x-axis, and this is good enough. So that is negative e to the x. Guys, we're going to stop here for today. You'll get some practice on your homework tonight. I hope you uh, use the rest of you know, your time now to go get that homework done. These videos are fairly short. We need to be practicing to actually get this all the way. I hope you have a good rest of your day.